This video was made possible thanks to CuriosityStream. Watch TLDR ad-free and get exclusive videos from us by signing up to the CuriosityStream Nebula Bundle deal at curiositystream.com forward slash TLDR UK. We've seen a lot in the news over the last few years about Russia's influence in elections, but perhaps few of you have read that much about the financial influence Russian oligarchs have in the UK, and more specifically in London. While this certainly has been a topic in the news, it just certainly hasn't been on the front pages as much. So we thought it might be worth digging into and discussing, especially because this week Lord Folkes has claimed that during Theresa May's premiership he was lent on to remove amendments trying to create a register of overseas property owners. So in this video we're going to explain why some people refer to London as Londongrad, and whether the government is taking this issue seriously. The influence of wealthy Russians in London is not really news to anyone. In fact, it has been suggested that the term Londongrad dates back at least two decades. More recently, a report was produced by the UK Foreign Affairs Committee in 2018 looking at exactly what the situation is with Russian money in London and what it means for the UK's relationship with Russia. To explain this story, we'll start by going through the main findings of the report. The first thing the report demonstrates is just how widespread the problem is. The authors spoke to Vladimir Osherkov of the Anti-Corruption Foundation, who found that over the last 20 years there are estimates that about £100 billion of Russian money has come to Britain from Russia. While only a fraction of this is likely illegitimate, it's still a problem. Transparency International, an anti-corruption group, have discovered £1.5 billion of Russian money in London property, much of which is held by shell companies in offshore havens. Additionally, around 6,000 properties in just the borough of Kensington and Chelsea are owned by anonymous companies, with The Economist stating that it's believed that they largely belong to Russians. The main reason why Russian oligarchs having so much money in the UK is a problem is because of the relationship between oligarchs and President Putin. Oliver Buller told the Foreign Affairs Committee that oligarchs hold property at the pleasure of Putin. They get to own it and enjoy it in return for the fact that he gets whatever he wants whenever he wants. He even equates Putin to a king from the Middle Ages. This is something that other experts seem to back up, with anti-corruption campaigners claiming that there's a difference between American-style self-made businessmen and Russian businessmen, with the latter making their money through their relationship with the Russian government. As such, they're expected to do chores for Putin. Dr. Mark Gagliotti of the Institute of International Relations in Prague went on to explain that these chores might be to invest money in a particular website that backs a populist politician. If the Russian state themselves donated this money, then it could be considered election meddling from a foreign state. In effect, this gives them plausible deniability. The report goes on to claim that something needs to be done about Russian money. Something like, for example, a UK version of the Magnitsky list a list made by the US of sanctions on those accused of human rights violations or corruption, and adopted by many other countries. And the UK just isn't really doing as much as other countries to try and stop this sort of money from being invested into London. A good case is the point of Dmitro Firtash, a pro-Putin Ukrainian gas mogul who was sanctioned by Ukraine and is currently fighting the US on bribery charges. Here in the UK, he gave a lot of money to Cambridge University, bought a £60 million house in London, and even bought the old Brompton Road tube station. Essentially, while other countries were sanctioning him, the UK instead allowed him to integrate his money. The UK also had a controversial fast-track residency scheme for anyone who invests a lot of money in the UK. Basically, anyone who invested more than £2 million can gain residency for themselves and their family. The length of time they have to wait for this depends on how much money they invest. £2 million gets it within 5 years, £5 million gets it within 3 years, and £10 million gets it within 2 years. You get the point, the UK has a problem with Russian money. So what's it doing to remedy this? Well, to be fair to the government, they've done a couple of things. As the report recommended, they've since introduced the Magnitsky Act, and in the past few days they scrapped the Fast Track Residency Scheme. They also introduced unexplained wealth orders, or UWOs, in 2018, which allow the government to confiscate property without criminal investigation. And they introduced account freezing orders, or AFOs, 
which allow courts to freeze funds in banks or building societies if it's believed that it's linked to criminal activity. But while these powers might sound great, they're apparently ineffective. Unlike America's register of specifically designed nationals, the UK's Magnitsky sanctions mostly apply to relatively small fry Russian officials involved in tax fraud, and UWOs have been used just four times since they were introduced, again for political small fry. Additionally, the government seems to have underfunded the National Crime Agency, whose job it is to look into financial crime. In 2021, they had a budget of £852 million, a 4.2% cut in real terms since 2016. According to Spotlight on Corruption, in the same time period, prosecutions fell by a third. There's also been some speculation that the government's relatively light-touch approach to Russian money is related to the fact that the Conservatives are actually pretty friendly with the Russians. Individuals with business links to Russia or Russian-born donors have given almost £2 million to either the Conservative Party or its individual constituency association since July 2019, according to the Electoral Commission. According to Business Insider, 14 Conservative ministers and two MPs on the Intelligence and Security Committee have received donations from individuals and companies linked to Russia. And Boris Johnson himself is particularly friendly with Evgeny Lebedev, son of former KGB agent turned oligarch Alexander Lebedev. Johnson made Evgeny a lord in 2020, presumably in part because the Evening Standard, which Lebedev owns, has supported Johnson throughout his career. Now, we should say that the Conservatives aren't unique in this respect. Jeremy Corbyn was endorsed by Russia's ambassador and Alex Salmond currently hosts a show on Russian state television, which routinely cheers his separatist movement. But they've faced the most scrutiny because A, they're the governing party, and B, because they've received by far and away the most money from Russian-linked businesses. This isn't a partisan point, by the way. It's just objectively relevant that the governing party has received substantial donations from the same people they're now trying to sanction. It's also worth mentioning, with the current tension in Ukraine, that oligarchs are now a tad worried that sanctions may soon be imposed on them here in the UK. This is pretty obvious given the fact that many of them have been lobbying the Foreign Office in recent days. Nonetheless, nothing's been confirmed yet. Some would argue that the government has shirked this issue for too long but others would give them credit for trying to rectify the issue now. As always, let us know what you think in the comments below. If that's not enough TLDR for you, you should head over to Nebula. You might have heard of them before, but my creative friends and I have teamed up to build our own platform where we don't need to worry about demonetization or the algorithm. Over there, you can find all of our latest videos ad-free, and we're also going to start posting exclusive Nebula Plus videos over there too, with our very first one already live. It's not just us either, all our favourite educational creators are already there, like Wendover Productions, Real Life Law, Polymatter, Legal Eagle, Half as Interesting, and many more. But wait, we said this video was brought to you by CuriosityStream, right? Well, as a platform full of the best documentaries online, they naturally love educational creators like us. As such, we've worked out a deal whereby, if you sign up to CuriosityStream using the link in the description, you'll also get free access to Nebula. That's not a trial either, you'll get access for as long as you're a member. To make things even better for a limited time, they're offering a deal where you can get 26% off their already low price, making an entire year of both services less than $15. Less than $15 a year for all your favourite educational creators, as well as superb documentaries on CuriosityStream. Signing up at curiositystream.com forward slash TLDR UK or clicking the link below not only gets you the best deal, but it also directly supports TLDR and educational content on the platform more generally, as well as getting you original content and an ad-free experience.